Well, if you're a parent, your kids are probably in bed by now. You'll get them up in the morning and send them off to school, assuming they'll come back safely. For some parents in the Louisa Muscatine School District, that nearly didn't happen. Yeah, back in November, several got a phone call. Their children's bus crashed. They needed to be picked up from the hospital. Tonight, we have exclusive video of the crash from inside that bus, and we hear from the students who lived through it. TV6 investigative reporter Mark Stevens joins us now. And Mark, a terrifying experience for the kids and their parents. Yes, when they heard rollover, the parents imagined their kids tumbling around as if they were inside a washing machine. And this never-before-seen video confirms it. These kids are sharing their experience for the first time, what it was like to be in a bus rollover. The parents have given us the okay to air it without blurring their identities, and this is video of a crash. It may not be appropriate for all viewers. November 18th started out like any other day for the kids riding bus 091. Get up, get dressed, get my bag ready and eat breakfast, and then brush my teeth and wait for the bus. Brothers Austin and Kale Cook watched for the bus to round the corner before walking to the end of their driveway. Kale was tired. I didn't want to go to school that day and my mom made me I'll get on the bus. The brothers boarded the bus around 7.30. Several others were already on. I was just sitting in the front listening to music. Matthew Crokestead and his sister Danielle, they've ridden the bus for years, like sophomore Dustin Swain Baker. All school, yeah. All, all school. Peyton Young and his brother Cooper were among the last to get on. Their normal ended two minutes later. I knew something was wrong as soon as like the bus hit the turn to the right and he lost control, hit the sign. Then he tried to correct himself, he went to the left. When he tried to correct himself, the whole like, I knew we were done. I don't really remember much of it because I blacked out. I just remember the bus hitting like a sign and then going this way, then going that way, then it flipped. When they like turn on that corner, like the trash can like I mean, that, like, one box, like, in the, like, never moves over that much. It, like, barely moves, it goes, like... When we went off the road and we came back on and we went to the other side and I knew we were going to wreck. Dustin, he was kind of, he was thrown against me, like, against, like, my side, and all the kids were probably thrown against my side of the bus, the driver's side. Really scary. Like, just to see, like, all of your friends' eyes and everything all terrified. Turn it went on, what? It went on its side, then it rolled into the ditch. I kind of blacked out right when we hit the sign, because we, like, slid over and we rolled and stuff, and, like, it, like, hurt really bad. I was in the front seat, and I ended up in, like, the fourth or fifth seat. I think I, I, think I hit my head and I smashed my shoulder into a window. Driver Ricky Hines was held by his seat belt as the bus pitched onto its roof, after sliding down the curves embankment. When the bus stopped, all the kids are on its side. Dustin suffered the worst injury with a broken collarbone. I just remember waking up just thinking, oh my God, my back hurts so much. And then, because I, when I first woke up, I was thinking, is this a dream? Because, you know, I just woke up out of a bus accident. Look at the video. The kids appear shocked. Help started arriving within minutes. I was really numb. The kids were taken to the hospital to wait for their parents to pick them up. A million things went through my mind, you know, as an as of my wife's, I could imagine. We were lucky that the worst injury was a broken collarbone. All went back to school within a few days. Superintendent Mike Van Sickle says half of the students along the route have not ridden the bus since. Many of the ones riding during the accident are back on, although they say it's still a little scary. Sometimes we hit a really bumpy road and I'll like grab the seat, but it's not like I can ride the bus. It's, it's fine. We were like really nervous and everything, like especially when we ran around the corner. We all like we all like looked down there just like this better not happen again, this better not happen again. Do you even want to ride the school bus anymore? No. 
wow. And speaking on all of us parents' behalf, I think yeah. a lot of us think, wow, our children are safe because we are told over and over again that school buses are among the safest thing out there. But this video and seeing the kids fly around makes you second guess that. Well, first, you got to remember school buses are designed to be very safe. Um, I mean, when you think about where the kids were sitting in those compartments, that's why the yep. seats are padded and they're very tall in the front and the rear. So if the bus gets hit in the front or the back, the kids are in a padded compartment. They have nowhere to go. It's a terrible phone call to get. Parents of 10 students in Louisa Muscatine schools finding out their kids were in the hospital. You saw the video from the November bus crash last night showing kids tossed around the bus. Now many are asking, why aren't school buses required to have seatbelts? TV6 Investigates reporter Mark Stevens has been looking into that issue. Mark? Yeah, the government's school bus rules date back to the 70s. They're designed the, uh, around the idea of putting kids in a padded compartment. If a bus crashes in the front or the rear, children will be kept within those seats as the bus stops. But back in the mid-90s, safety researchers began looking at school bus accidents where the bus was hit on the side or rolled over. It found those compartments leave kids vulnerable. I mean, just never thought about it. I mean... How many times has a bus roll over? <laughs> Tanya Young didn't worry about the lack of seat belts on her kid's bus before the November accident. When she got that phone call, though... First picture that went through my head was of the bus rolling over and the kids just tumbling around. She and her husband, Jason, welcomed the idea of seat belts following the accident. The main thing is just to get the kids safe. That's what we need. The kids have to be safe at all times. Live through it as a student and, and now as a superintendent as well. Louisa Muscatine Superintendent Mike Van Sickle says his school bus tipped over in a ditch back in the 70s when he was in middle school. I can uh, feel for the kids who were involved because, yeah, it's, it's a scary uh, situation. I happened to land on my sister because I was on the, the side in which I slid. He says after the November accident, his lead bus driver looked into the seatbelt issue. The information they gathered didn't reveal a lot. You have uh, two professional organizations having the same debate that, that we're having right here. <laughs> and, and there you have it. The National Transportation Safety Board studied six school bus crashes in 1999. It found the compartment strategy that's been in place since the 70s leaves passengers vulnerable when a bus gets hit on the side or rolls over. The kids fall out of the seats. NTSB issued two recommendations back then. First, study how to protect school bus passengers in all crash types. Second, require restraints to do the job. NTSB wanted it done in two years. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration began working on those studies, looking at cost, safety benefit, and use. The seat belts are used incorrectly. It's probably more harmful than good. NHTSA ran its tests. In 2002, it declared the current compartment seating design safe. NHTSA's study found adding lap and shoulder belts could protect students, but NHTSA said they're too expensive to require on large school buses. Five years later, NHTSA was asked again about seat belts. This time, it required lap and shoulder belts in small school buses, but it again ruled against requiring seat belts on large school buses because of the cost. Just because the vehicle is large and painted yellow doesn't change the laws of physics. Dr. Alan Ross leads the National Coalition for School Bus Safety. His group pushes for a mandate because without one, he says, school districts will never pay the added cost. But the problem with the private is the public sector is it's the least common denominator. In other words, it's the cheapest kid that always gets the sale or the lease. Seatbelt prices have gotten cheaper over the years. Seat manufacturers and school bus experts estimate adding seat belts to a new bus adds between three and eight thousand dollars to the sticker price. Trouble is, a new bus costs around $100,000. It is kind of a hard sell. Louisa Muscatine Superintendent Mike Van Sickle says his district buys one new bus every year. Right now, it only has one bus that is considered seatbelt ready. He says upgrading it would cost $29,000. And if there are seatbelts installed on the bus, Van Sickle feels he'd have to hire a bus monitor to make sure the kids wear them. Almost a necessity to be able to keep track of the kids and, and, and being able to supervise them in any way, shape, or form. Van Sickle's worry about seatbelt use is one question University of Alabama researchers wondered about. They studied seatbelt use in 2010 and found students would wear seatbelts on buses 62% of the time. 
Their research says seat belts would help reduce the severity of injuries and reduce deaths. However, their study found replacing buses in Alabama over 10 years would cost $117 million. That far outweighed the estimated benefit of saving one life worth $38 million. If there are studies that, that are uh, non-debatable and can show that there's huge safety advantages uh, to seatbelts, um, then uh, that's when elective officials uh, um, or hired officials like myself need to take those those types of things and make policy or make law. The majority of students involved in the Louisa Muscatine bus crash say they would wear seat belts, especially after being involved in a crash. The young say they support the added cost. The biggest thing is our kids are home tonight. They're safe. You know, we get to hold our kids. And if they have to convince other taxpayers to cough up extra money, the youngs feel it is a strong sell. Or maybe they have grandchildren. Maybe they have a friend that has a child that rides the bus. Do they want that child to come home safe? Yeah, every time you see that video, you think yeah. of what if my child was on that. So what about the NTSB recommendation? What's happening with that? Well, they closed those years ago, and they're not happy about it because NHTSA basically never did the full testing that NTSB wanted. So they argue that you know, we don't really know the answer about the cost and all the impacts of the seat belts because without the full test, we don't know how much benefit there is. Are there any states that require seat belts in buses? Six of them, actually. Uh, New York, California, Florida, Louisiana, Texas, and New Jersey. But the ca catches with some of those, some of those states haven't actually funded the programs to put the seat belts in, and some of them don't even require the students to wear them. Well, it is one of the most critical jobs in a school district, driving the bus that gets your child and others to and from school safely. The bus crash in the Louisa County, uh, Louisa Muscatine District this past November pushed bus safety into the spotlight. Tonight, we look at the man behind the wheel, a man who was ticketed for failing to stay in control of that bus as it tumbled off the road. TV6 investigates reporter Mark Stevens looked into his background and found that this is not his first ticket in a bus. Mark? Police wrote Ricky Hines the same type of ticket back in May of 2014. He clipped a parked car while driving a school bus for the same district, Louisa Muscatine. He pleaded not guilty but didn't show up for his court dates and was fined. That's not the only ticket Hines has on his record, so we looked into how he got his job. Uh, Mr. Hines uh, subbed for us for a time and uh, um, during that uh, subbing, uh, you know, he showed uh, very good safety. Louisa Muscatine Superintendent Mike Van Sickle says Ricky Hines was hired back in 2013. He was a substitute driver in the spring and did a good enough job that he earned a regular route in the fall. If people uh, show good consistency and safety in the sub realm, then of course that's someone that we're also going to uh, consider. Hines passed the background check the school district is required to do. Iowa's law mandates school districts look at court records. Records TV6 investigates checked show Hines has nine traffic violations dating back to 1994. Were those red flags? TV6 investigates asked Superintendent Van Sickle. There has not been anybody that's applied uh, that we've actually hired <laughs> that has had uh, a uh, something that, quote, I could not live with. Or that showed up. Some of Hines' prior convictions include operating without a registration, disobeying a traffic sign, and lacking financial liability coverage. The Iowa DOT told us none of those prior convictions threaten his commercial driver's license. In fact, the DOT told us half of the violations have fallen off Hines' driving record. Most of the normal uh, traffic violations will stay on a record for five years. The DOT's Dennis Clean says the only issue threatening Hines' commercial driver's license are his two school bus accidents. They happened within a six-month period. If he has another accident in any vehicle through May... At that point, he could be considered a habitual violator, which is three or more moving violations in a 12-month period. And... At that point, he could be suspended. A suspension would invalidate his commercial driver's license, barring him from driving a school bus. Hines resigned his job with the school district in December, although his CDL is still valid. Superintendent Van Sickle says Hines passed all the tests and his background check with no issues when he was hired. As far as the first school bus accident, the parked car incident back in May... That was not uh, uh, a huge... Uh, infraction 
in, in my opinion. Hines declined an on-camera interview when TV6 reached him by phone. He did say he was very sorry about the November accident, and he says seeing any school bus on the road tears him apart.